Okay, I thought I'd make this quick tutorial, uh, or it's sort of discovery of sorts, um, on how you can use a, in this case, um, Metashape um, photogrammetry program to do camera tracking. Because um, all you really need to do is convert the multiple cameras that come out on the export um, to an animated camera. And uh, I was really struggling. I know, know there should be like um, Python scripts for Blender and you know, mail scripts from Maya or whatever to, to be able to do that. But um, I just couldn't find them. <laughs> but there's a far simpler way, um, which is to, so I've got the castle in here. I've done some masks on the, you know, exported it out of After Effects with these masks. So we mask out the, the letterboxing and everything. And then done a solve. Normally, I just quickly walk through the thing. Um, just You just need to do the line photos. Normally, I would go highest. Um, and I went on estimated as opposed to sequential, but normally I would do sequential. But if you get like bumps, if the cameras aren't correctly solved, if it's not a smooth row of cameras and it's wobbly and stuff, it hasn't done it correctly. So, and I found that when I did estimated, it seemed to do a better job, but normally I would go on sequential, right? Um, and you want the last one off. Right? So it's normally like this, but because I'm doing it a second time, it's saying, oh, do you want to throw away your first attempt? And also if it fail, if it doesn't do all the cameras, you can run it again and it will do the additional cameras. So that's um, until it's done everything. So anyway, that's out of the way. So we've got this load of cameras and the point, the rough point cloud. And this is all we need. We don't really need, I mean, we can do the meshing and more more dense point cloud and everything. That's, but this is all, I just want to show you the tracking thing, right? So all you need to do is go export, uh, export cameras, camera. <laughs> just go with the defaults so the the Chan thing is a nuke like motion file format if you like um, which can be a camera or an axis or an empty or a dummy whatever you like to call it um, it just exports that out as as a, a motion uh, which uh, so now if you go export points and we'll do that best as an OBJ um, point cloud okay so now over to blender and we can go select the camera, go file import. Uh, you need to, under preferences, add uh, the um, nuke chan loader or importer. There you go, just add it. It comes with Blender. And then, uh, so then go to the chan, and then we'll go to the desktop, and then we'll load the camera. I'll leave it all for defaults at the moment. Okay, so now we have the camera, and just zoom out a bit. There's the camera. And it's uh, I think about 400 frames or so. Okay, so there's the camera, and that's looking all right I think. Uh, get rid of the box. Go file import, OBJ, and I'll go desktop and point cloud import. Okay, so now if we look through the camera, we should see the the uh, well we would if our clipping distance wasn't so. Change that and let's put out to 1,000. There we go. So now we can see the castle, right? That's looking like it's worked. Uh, the only, but you need to check this. This is one thing that's important: is that it has it's correctly done it. Um, I mean, it's a sort of automatic thing, really. There's not really much you can do if it hasn't. You know, if you're using it for camera tracking, you need every frame to be correct, right? Um, so anyway, go to, th and this is the one here. Okay. And there you go. And um, what you can do, uh, I think you, you, it's normally worth um, just messing about a little bit with the camera's focal length. So we'll ditch the, what the keys it's created, so clear, and just hold on shift and just tweak it a little bit and just make sure that things are lined up best best you can. And then what you can do is just go add plane let's say what is that oh, that's pretty massive the scene I think I'm gonna stop the video here but that's that's the basic principle um, but what you can do is just um, if you put snaps on vertices and then you can just grab and stick that to a point there and sit down to a point there and something like that see where that is maybe we want to do try and do this one here. There 
There you go. Let's see how well that if that tracks. If I just disable the point cloud, you'll see it more clearly. But that's the basic principle. Oh, it's not quite on the right thing, is it? Might be helpful having two views up just so you can see that it has gone to the correct point in space. Okay, I think I'm going to stop the video, but you get a general idea um, that that hasn't gone to the correct point in space. So let's let's grab it. And obviously, you could do, let's say, maybe a a better, an actual meshed, you know, as opposed to use the 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 um, the, 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 the low res point cloud that's sort of generated when the the camera is uh, generated. Um, you could actually go, you know, f f mesh it properly. Uh, one other thing that's important to mention is the distortion. You have to remove the lens distortion if there is any, otherwise things won't stick. Um, but I'm going slightly off topic now. But anyway, that's the basic principle. But yeah, I just thought I'd share it because it sort of I wanted to do this for it because it obviously makes more sense having one camera with a animated image sequence on it than. Um, than having 300 cameras each with their own texture right it's just more easy on the graphics card that way